to this episode of the I Hate Matt Wall Poetry Podcast. Wow. Today, I will be going over some comments about my last episode. And I will also be explaining to formalist poets how they could expand their audience if they would like to. So, hopefully this works well for everyone. This doesn't just come off as me being an asshole, or, um, I actually don't fucking care anymore if I come off as an asshole on this topic. Um, I've tried so fucking hard to be, um, a fucking nice guy, and it almost drove me crazy last week. So, I have decided that I kind of stopped caring, and I wish you all the best. Yeah, but that's it. Let's let's dig into this. Um, I guess I could talk about this a little bit. The crowdfunding campaign for your mom, winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. We have four backers now, and we have like 20 days left, so we gotta crank that shiznat upsat, whatever I'm saying. But I did a video where I put together the chat book for March, where I go over like how I build it in pages and then in create booklet and stuff like that. And then how I make the cover also in pages um, without having to like use like Photoshop or anything like that and all that fun stuff. But I also did a video before that one for the chat book that's going to come out in April. And it was, um, the, the theme of it was like childhood, like my childhood and stuff like that. So if you're familiar with the poem, um, what was it called? I really hated that fucking fence or I fucking hated that fence or whatever. April's chat book kind of is a lot of poems like that. And I was trying to figure out, and the reason why I never finished that series of videos is because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to call it. And I didn't have um, a solid, like, cover idea in my head. And then last night, just fucking around, I got an idea real quick, and I fucking made the cover and didn't make a video of it. So I apologize for that. But basically what it is, um, it's called me as an action figure and the reason why i called it that is because well let me tell you what the cover is the cover is um an illustration of a masters of the universe he-man action figure with my head on it and then it like the me as an like that's written like he-man like with the dashes and everything so it's just it's kind of funny but when I was thinking back, I'm like, okay, what, like, made my childhood? Like, what was, like, the defining thing that was, like, me as a kid? And it was honestly me with my action figures, like, shoving as many action figures into my pockets as I could, going out into the yard, front yard, backyard, um, garage bathroom like wherever I could go the park and I would take all my action figures and have adventures and tell stories you know that was like the greatest thing like of my childhood that was kind of like the the whole deal with that so that'll be April's chapbook and um, again runner up is the chapbook from March and you can only get that with getting um, Winner of Your Mom's Sodomy Prize for Poetry. So anyway, that was just like a little fun thing. And I feel bad because I did the whole video series on putting together that one chat book. And then the biggest thing, I didn't do the cover on the video. So uh, I just I screwed that. So sorry, guys. If you're just listening to the podcast, you're missing out because I just did cover reveals for both Runner Up and me as an action figure. So if you want to see those, go over to YouTube and click the join feature button and 
pick a tier and become a member. Poetic Anarchy Press is moving very slowly. I feel like it was like kind of like freight train speed, and then a couple logistic things happened, and I don't know how to figure them out. And it's not like, I, I can't figure this out. It's like, I can either do this, or I could do this, or I could do this. Which one of these things do I want to do? And I can't decide. So I'm still thinking about that. I think I have like the first batch of poets I'm going to be publishing. And the other thing that I pretty much going to be taking care of, and I think I'll probably start putting this together in April after I take care of like the your mom thing. But I think it's really important that I do some sort of poetry review, some sort of poetry journal, like poetry zine. Like I love the blood rag and I love that people have been putting it up in places and sending me pictures and stuff. That's so fucking cool. Thank you to everyone who's been doing that. And I think the blood rag serves its purpose, and I'm not going to stop doing the blood rag. But I think doing a more in-depth little magazine, basically, that has more long-form poetry from certain poets, and then like interviews with the poets and stuff in there, is kind of an important thing. And... I think the best way to get Poetic Anarchy Press off the ground is to highlight like these poets and do enough stuff with them in it and really push them. So that is something that is going to be coming. And because I was using the Bloodshed Press name and all that stuff, I think I'm going to use that for this journal or review. So I'll either call it the Bloodshed Review, which is what I was going to call it like a year ago when I wanted to put that out, or I'll just call it Bloodshed, or I'll call it something, I don't know, maybe the Bloodshed Review. I kind of like that. So yeah, so that's happening. So now let me get on over to the shoutouts, because I, I'm doing something a little bit different, and I hope I don't forget anybody. So what we're going to do now is I want to thank a lot of people here. I'm not going to do this all the time, but I'll probably do it like once a month or something like that. And now's the time I'm going to do this. But I want to thank the people who support me, not through Patreon and not through YouTube, but the people who actually support my work and buy my books repeatedly. Um, I want to... I mean, those are true readers and true like people who push me and I appreciate you guys. And so I just, I want to kind of give them some props here too. And then I also want to give props to kind of like the alumni, you know, the people who have in the past, like supported me on Patreon or supported me on YouTube for whatever reason had to stop doing that, whether it was financial or they just got sick of me. The fact that you helped me for a period, I appreciate a lot. So, I want to give a big thank you to Wayne, Jeff, Gina, Brian, Mark, Sean, Buck, Tyler, Oliver, Keith, Morgan, Patrick, James, Diana, Oliver, Callie, Amanda, Caitlin, Lisa, SJ, Anna, Tabitha, Scott, Robin, BP, Francine, Julia, Scott, Chris, Adam, Josh, Anthony, Misha, Anne, Ryan, and Vaughn. And then also I want to give thanks to Andrew, AM, Sharkbait, Aaron, Kent, Eric, Hannah, Tim, Lisa, Allen, Jeff, Jeff, Christine, Allison, Mike, Audrey, Sarah, Garrett, and Jess. Thank all of you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You guys are awesome, and your continued support has been the world to me. And I just hope that um, 
I can keep making you guys proud. So with that said, let's get into the um, patron shout out. So I want to give a thank you to, to Michael, to Deborah, to Cedar, to Harry. I want to give a thank you to those in the thank you crew, to Patrick, to Britt, to JH, and to Jan. And then over in the Anarchy crew, I want to give a big thank you to, to Bunny, to Nate, to Minnie, to Thomas, to Josh, to Shaylin, to Jessica, to Tim J, to Chill Baby, and to Tamara. And um, as far as the chapbook of the month goes, the number one chappies over there, I want to give a big thank you to Caitlin and the SDG. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. All right. So that was a fun little different way to do that. And I, I don't think I'm going to do this every time, but I, I appreciate all of you. So thank you guys for that. Uh-oh. I got an empty box of tubes. So the episode I did on artists versus craftsmen it, it's strange because i don't know if people are just feeling sorry for me but like or i don't know if people are just being like ultra nice because they know i've been in pain and whatever but like i i got quite a few messages about it the funny thing is is that the negative responses or let's say not in full agreement responses I got. We're all really sweet. It just goes to show that like, there are people out there who are bigger than me, who are have a bigger hearts, who have bigger souls, who are just fucking good people, okay? Um, because I, I obviously, I couldn't do that. I couldn't like send you know who a fucking happy hug email going, hey, I completely disagree with everything you said, but you're super. And that's not what I got necessarily, but um, I, I've, I've just gotten a, a couple things. And so what I, I almost want to challenge you guys to do this. If you like disagree with something I say, because I got two messages in particular where in the first or second line of the message, it was kind of like, hey, that was great. I disagree with a ton of it or loads to disagree with here or not a fan of your takes shit like that and it's it's funny because then there there were no rebuttals like there was no like these are the things i disagree with this is the things i'm having problems with and so like i know nobody wants to like pick a fight and this isn't even about a fight because like i i don't know if i made this abundantly clear or not but I feel like I've come to an understanding with why this argument can never be solved. And I'm okay with that. Like, I completely get it. And before, it was like me wanting to shake a baby and say, listen to me, hear me, believe me, like, follow my viewpoints and all this other shit. And now it's like, I'm like, oh... I get it. Like, these things will never change. I completely understand that. And so I'm not, like, fragile about this or anything like it. Because I understand it. It's deeper than just, like, for instance, like, I'm going to tell formalist poets in this episode how to connect with readers more, okay? And how to maybe write their stuff in a way that is a little different. Now, the chances of anyone in that world wanting to or even being able to do the things that I'm going to say are very, very, very slim. And it's not because they can't do it. It's because it's not in someone's nature to do that. You know, just like it's not in my nature to spend weeks thinking about how words sound next to each other. Like, that, it just does not make sense to me. I, I don't see why anyone would ever do that. Okay? But I know there are people that do that thing. 
and that's fine. That was another thing I don't think people really got. There are people, even though, okay, because in the episode I, I said, craft poets cannot make art. They never will make art because they're working on craft. I'm saying that in the sense of the people who are true craft poets, that's that's what they want to do. They're not going to do anything else. Why the fuck would they? Just like me, being an artist, I will never be a craft poet because I don't fucking want to do that. There's no point in that for me. Like, I march to a beat of a different drum, whatever, okay? But that doesn't mean that I haven't done that in the past. And it doesn't mean that if you do both things, that you can't exist. You know what I'm saying? There are people who do all sorts of stuff. But in the in the base emotion, in the base primal instinct of being a craftsman poet, that person will never be an artist. Just like an artist, a true artist, will never be a craftsman poet. That doesn't mean that either one of those things can be both. You can dabble, you can toy, you can spend half your time on this and half your time on that. But that's because you are doing that thing, not because you are that thing. Does that make sense? Like, I'm, I'm really hoping I'm not coming off as condescending or shitty or anything like that. I'm trying to say that anybody could do anything whenever they fucking want to. But there are people who, at their core, will never do these things. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully that's clear. But also, if you have actual, like, again, disagreements about any of the stuff I said, like, and you feel like you want to take the time to explain why you differ in that, I would love to hear it. And I would love to talk about it on here. This next thing, and I don't know how deep I want to get into this. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the comments that I got about this that really like kind of stuck out to me and I don't know if I should say who this is so said I would consider trying to do an episode that's actually aimed at the poets you went after in this one not to persuade them but to try to convince them to make their work more broadly appealing that's the thing they really don't know how to do and it's the thing that they might be able to learn from you. I was thinking about that, and I was like, oh. Yeah, this is kind of like a flies with honey and vinegar thing. Actually, I have a poem about that. I should read it, because this is a poetry podcast, y'all. Let me get in on this. Yeah, this is a short one. It's called How to Catch Flies. It is said, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. I don't know much about that. I do know that dog shit and wet garbage on a hot day will probably do just as well. Make of that what you will. Yeah, man. I have had honey, and I've had honey out, and I've never seen flies in my honey. I've had vinegar out, and I definitely have never seen flies in my vinegar. But I've seen dog shit, and there's always flies on dog shit. I've seen stinky trash cans, and like like hot, wet trash cans, and there's always flies on hot, wet trash. So I think if you really want to catch flies, you need to be slinging shit and trash. That's probably how this whole thing works. I wonder what vinegar... Like, is vinegar supposed to be trash? Because you totally catch more flies with trash. I think you could catch more flies with trash and shit. Maybe it's like... Well, you could catch the flies because they get stuck in the honey. But I could also pour honey on dog shit and honey on hot, wet trash. And then they would stick to that. If that's all it takes. Maybe it's not attracting flies. 
It's just actually catching them. And then why, why do you want to catch flies? What do you want to do with them after you catch them? Flies are like the worst things to catch. Like there's absolutely nothing to do with them. I don't even think they're that nutritious. Oh my God, what a conundrum. Anyway, moving right along. So I'm thinking about this. Like what would I tell a formalist poet to do to make their work more broadly appealing. I wrote down a couple ideas right off the top of my head. I think the point more than any other point would be to fucking say something. And I know this sounds stupid because poets are like, well, that's all I do is say stuff because like I'm a poet and I really care about the words and all this other shit. You can talk and talk, and write, and write, and write, and write, and write pages and pages of things that don't say a fucking thing. I'm sure every single person listening to this has read books where they turn page after page after page and nothing was actually said. I know there's a lot of you who talk to people and just people you know in everyday life. And they will talk your fucking ear off. And at the end of it, never actually said a single goddamn thing. Okay? So this, I think, is the most important thing to appeal broadly. Is to fucking say something. And when you say that thing, that thing needs to be clear. That thing needs to be concise. It needs to be simple. There needs to be a simple, clear thing said. An idea, a, a statement, a question, something. There needs to be something that makes someone, when they're done reading that, feel like connected to you or questioned by you or just make someone fucking think when someone reads my poetry I want them to spend a couple minutes reading a poem but then after they read that poem for a couple minutes I want them to sit around for hours thinking about what the fuck I just did not because they're confused by it, but how it affects them. Like, what question did I put in front of this person to make them take more time out of their day and contemplate what I put at their feet? That is very important, and that's how people get to know you. If you make somebody fucking think for a bit, they're going to want to talk about this because there's going to be this feeling inside of them that's like, good fucking God, man. What the fuck was that? Did, oh, geez. Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. And they're going to be moved to talk to someone about that. Now, some of you might be going, oh, but yes, this is what happens when... You know, we, we find a great line in a poem and we want to share this great line with people. Okay, how does that go? Well, here is this great line. Oh, yes, that is a great line. That's the end of the fucking conversation. You have to be able to present the reader something that will make them think. Like, seriously, some of you might be going, you don't fucking do that. Guess what? Me and you, and maybe just me, had a long conversation about honey and vinegar. And then we had a longer conversation about dog shit and wet trash on a hot day. Then we had another conversation. I mean, yes, this is all the same conversation. But what happens when you pour honey on dog shit? Now, some of you who um, don't like foul language might not actually talk about this with anybody. But some of you, like later tonight... You'll just be sitting there with your significant other and you'll just go, <laughs> have like a little chuckle 
And the significant other goes, what's that? Oh, I was just thinking about honey on dog shit. Well, that's a fucking weird thing to say. So now you're going to have a talk. What does catch more, fl- more flies? Honey or vinegar? Why? Why does one want to catch flies? What is the point of this? And then you go on and on and on and on and on. And then you start thinking about, why is that thing even a saying? Oh, well, it's a saying because it's better to be nice to people than to treat people like garbage. That's what this whole thing's about. Because in this analogy, people are flies that vomit on dog shit and then eat their vomit up once their vomit breaks down pieces of the dog shit. That's what we think people are in this analogy, allegedly. Okay? Do you guys see what's happening here? We're talking. We're having this whole thing about a poem. But when your poem is fucking vague and beautifully written but says fucking nothing no one will ever talk about that again yes that's a beautiful poem it did the things it hit the notes it was supposed to hit but like you should be wanting to scar motherfuckers change people's fucking lives You know what I'm saying? Like, reading your poem should be a kid walking in on their parents having sex. That image does not go away. Do you see what I'm saying here? Now, with that said, I also don't think that you should be spending tons of time trying to figure out how to do this. This is something that should just happen. It should just become. Because as a poet, all of these things should be something that you're constantly dealing with at all times. You know what I'm saying? Like, you shouldn't sit down thinking, what question can I ask that will confuse a reader to the point of them having to spend all day thinking about it. That's not how it is. Things should happen to you. This is why I talk about poets need to have an interesting life. Or at least poets need to be fucking interesting. They need to be able to have something happen. Take that inside of them. Wrestle with it. And then be able to share that in a way that makes the reader then wrestle with that same thing. Okay. The job of the poet is to see the world artistically and then through your eyes be able to make someone read this feel those feelings, experience those emotions. And when poets get just hung up on what words string together well and how they all fit into whatever form you're working with, a lot of the actual meat of disrupting somebody's existence is just tossed aside, you know? I didn't think of this when I did my episode Um, the last episode, and I didn't think of this when I was recording all of those other episodes about that episode that I never ended up putting out or whatever. I remember I shared this poem not too long ago with a friend of mine. It's a very short Bukowski poem, and it can be found in Play the Piano Like a Percussion Instrument Until the Fingers Begin to Bleed a Bit, I think is the name of the title really fucking long title but the poem is called art and if you don't know it i will recite it for you now and it says uh, as the spirit wanes the form appears i've heard a lot of people who i at one point thought were very intelligent try to um, describe what that poem is and talk about what they think that poem means. And then I've heard other people who I think are 
fairly stupid most of the time, talk about that poem and say what that poem means. And I don't think there is really much meaning in that poem other than what is said. It's a very simple poem, and I think it's straightforward as fuck. But there are a lot of people, and you could probably like Google search this if you even gave two shits about it, but people who try to get really deep into what could this possibly mean. It's very specific. It says exactly what it means. I don't know. I, I almost don't know if I should keep this from you. Like, maybe I should keep this from you. Make you fucking go out and look for it. I What I will say is I used to think that poem was fucking the most prophetic fucking thing in the world. Like, I just thought, I'm like, yep, water is wet, the sun is hot, and that poem is truth, you know? Now, after last week and shit, like, I don't, I don't know if that is 100% accurate. I think it could be accurate with some people, but I don't think it's accurate all the way around. Because again, I think there are different types of creators out there. But again, this poem is called Art, so maybe it's being very specific with who it's actually talking about. And if that's the case, then yeah, I, I can see that now. I just talk myself back into it. That's how easy this shit is. You see how that happened? Fuck me. All right. Art Bukowski. Look it up. Move this right along. But if you guys have any questions, comments, arguments, hate mail, dick pics, I hate Matt Wall at gmail.com. Okay. Let's get into plugging butts. All right. So here we are. And the butt plugs today are going to be the same thing they're going to be for the rest of the month. Do nothing except go over to igg.me slash at slash your mom. Y-E-R-M-O-M. The link will be down in the description. Go there. Support winner of your mom's sodomy prize for poetry. Make this thing happen. There's all sorts of cool shit you can get with it different tiers, different stuff. You want me to come to your house for a couple days? Sorted. It's on there. Look it up. Okay? All of these things can happen. Okay? So, run over there. Make your mom proud. Make me happy. Do your soul a favor for fuck's sake. God, you treat yourself like shit. Do that thing. Type hard. And I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys and thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the Creo or the Anarchy Creo, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.